I'm Alex. This is Code Along with Alex, and let's manage secrets using kubectl. So, to follow along today, you're going to need a Kubernetes cluster and the kubectl command line tool configured to communicate with that cluster. I'm using Killer Coda, which is an awesome playground environment for Kubernetes. So, that's going to be linked in the video description, and I encourage you to check it out. All right, let's dive right in. So, uh, a secret object stores sensitive data, such as credentials, used by pods to access services. So, for example, you might need a secret to store the username and password needed to access a database. You can create the secret by passing the raw data in the command or by storing the credentials and files that you pass in the command. The following commands create a secret that stores the username admin and the password, uh, kind of some gnarly characters that you'll see in a second. So let's use raw data and show kind of the non-secret uh, flavor of credentials in kubectl. So we'll start with the kubectl command, create secret, and then generic user pass from literal equals username equals admin from literal equals password equals now I'll pass that gnarly string it doesn't particularly matter what you use I mean for this toy example I'm just following what the docs suggest to make sure things line up. Great. And you must use single quotes to escape special characters such as the dollar sign, backslash, asterisk, equals, and exclamation point in your string. So if you don't do that, your shell will interpret these characters. Awesome. So our secret DB user pass was created. Another way to do this uh, without passing directly to the source file or to the kubectl command is to store credentials and files with the values encoded in base64. So let's create some files with our credentials. So to start, I'm going to echo admin. Pardon the barking. So we're going to encode it base64. Into a file called username.txt. So then if we cat that file, we can see the contents. Awesome. Now let's do the same thing with the password that we generated previously and encode it in base64. My pitbull mixed Tallulah is particularly displeased with something going on in the yard right now. There must be a squirrel or something disrupting her, her zen. It's all good. Okay, S B equals closing single quote encoded into base64 and then save that into password.txt. Great. And then if we cat password, we'll see some contents. Awesome. And the dash n flag ensures that the generated files do not have an extra new line character at the end of the text. This is important because when kubectl reads a file and encodes the contents into base64 string, the extra new line character gets encoded too. And so you do not need to escape special characters and strings that you include in a file. So now that we have these two files with our base64 encoded credentials, Let's pass the file paths to kubectl to generate secrets in a different manner.
So we get cube CTO, create secret, generic, DB user pass. Now we're gonna do, instead of from uh, literal, we're gonna pass the from file flag. And then, oh, excuse me, I did not from from, from file. And then we wanna do the file path of our username, txt, and then from file equals password dot txt. Everything looks good. I think I spelled everything correctly. And so the default key name is the file name. And so you can optionally set the key using uh, a different uh, convention, but for the sake of this example, we're just gonna go with the standard. But I guess you could also, so to be extremely explicit, we could do from file equals username equals username.txt and then from file equals password equals dot slash password txt. And with either method, the output should be similar, except it's already created. So let's, let's rename it. We'll name it something else. Uh, we'll call it DB user pass. Um, let's call it from file. Awesome. And now we should have a new secret created. Yep. Great. So let's verify our secrets and check that kubectl actually created them. So we should have two secrets now. The db user pass and then the db user pass from file. Yep, great. You can see they're both opaque. One's a little older because we created it first, but, and then there's two, I guess, data points in each secret, the username and the password. Now let's describe the contents of our secret using the describe method. We'll check the DB user pass to start and then we'll look at the from file variant second. So you can see the uh, values are obfuscated, but we get some information about our secret, which is nice. So we're not actually accidentally exposing our secret uh, in the terminal, because if you have any logging software, that could be bad. So let's also see what the contents looks like on the from file variant. Basically the same, just a slightly longer password. So maybe I typed it in incorrectly, but that's fine. Uh, it's no biggie. All right, so now we've created secrets using two different methods. And now let's decode our secret to view the contents and see uh, the values that are actually contained. So to do that, you use the kubectl get secret method. And then you can specify which secret you're interested in by passing the secret name. And then we want to output it to a JSON path. And this should, I believe, interpolate based on the data name or the data in contained within. But let's see what actually is output. Yeah, awesome. So it just kind of exposes the data to the terminal in this JSON format key value pairs inside curly brackets. We can do the similar thing for db user pass from file. And 
we get a similar result. Okay. Now let's decode the password data from base64 into the actual native encoding of the value. So actually, let's do the user password file. Let's output that. So now let's copy this password string. Unfortunately, copying from the terminal in a web-based browser pops up the developer inspect tools. There must be another way to copy strings from the terminal without triggering that. I don't want to have to change all my bindings, but yeah, end rant. So let's echo this base64 encoded text into the base64 utility and decode it. And let's see what the output is like. So you can see that it's similar. I mean, I think I just copied the text wrong, which is fine. Uh, it's, it's no biggie, but it happens. Let's see what the contents of the, the non from file variant is. Okay. I guess I didn't realize I could do that. Awesome. Okay. So now let's do echo base 64 decode. That looks much better. Okay. Great. So this example is for documentation purposes and uh, don't do this <laughs> with like production secrets because that will store your uh, decoded secrets in your shell history and anyone with access to the computer could find that command and decode the secret and that could be suspect for the security of your application or system so uh, a better approach is to combine the view and decode commands as such cube CTL get secret, db user pass dash o, and then JSON path equals single brackets or single quote curly bracket dot data dot password. Ooh, that's freaking out. Okay, there we go. Password base sixty four dash dash decode. Interesting. Did I type that correctly? I guess I did. Yeah, it output. Okay, cool. I just didn't notice it. Yeah. Okay. So you can also edit a secret unless it's immutable. And so to edit a secret, just run the following command. So let's kubectl edit secrets. And then we want to do db. Oh, let's edit secrets. db user pass the oh did i find a typo in the docs oh no i didn't i just i have an extra hyphen or dash for no reason edit secrets okay yeah that's weird that It uses get secret in the non-plural, but then you edit secrets. <sighs> That's confusing. You know what I mean? I'm not a fan of that. I feel like it should be consistent. The the tense or the 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 plurality of secrets or lack thereof. Just from like a user perspective, I'm not gonna remember when to use singular or plural. I guess maybe you do the more you use it, but like 
I feel like that's kind of annoying. Um, okay, so now this opens our default editor after I finish ranting, and we can update the base64 encoded secret values in the data field um, as such. And so uh, lines beginning with the pound sign will be ignored. And so that's nice. Let's modify our secret. What do we want to tweak? I mean, I don't really want to change anything. Well, let's do it anyway. That's fine. Just add an extra character. It's not, it's not happy. It doesn't want me. Interesting. It like doesn't want me to edit it. Hmm. All right. Oh, this is Vim, that's why. Bro, I don't want to do this with Vim. I'd rather do this with Nano. <laughs> okay. How do you like why am I not letting me change things? Can we edit the name? No. Oh, there we go. Okay, something was just weird before. Okay, and then... What is it, like, colon... Oh no, X, how do you, <laughs> I always forget how to exit Vim, you know what I mean? There's a Q, I have to Google this. <sighs> the noob struggles, escape key. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, I wanna do Colt. Not an editor command. Okay. What What is an editor command, though? Type QA to abandon all changes. I don't want to abandon changes. I want to save. Okay, cool. Now to exit Vim, colon Q. There we go. We got an error. Oh, so it didn't like that we changed. Okay. Now I'm understanding. Let's just change the password. I'll keep the name. Everything else the same. Let's just add. Yeah, we just re removed a character, I guess. Cool. A colon W. Okay, now, now, colon W, okay, colon W, there we go, no, colon Q, there we go, okay, sweet, we updated our YAML, <laughs> we've modified the password, now let's see what that looks like compared to before. I believe it's going to be just slightly different. Go back. I'm trying to exit this now, bro. Dude, Vim is weird. <laughs> no valid changes were saved? Bro. I'm just trying to like edit the password. Okay. Written. Okay, cool. Didn't like that. <laughs> okay. 
No valid changes were saved. Interesting. Okay. Probably doing something wrong. I think it's just a Vim thing. <laughs> My uh, with me, it's like a user error with Vim more than anything. But let's now delete the secret. You've watched me struggle with Vim long enough. I've watched myself struggle with Vim long enough for today. Um, okay, so now we can delete the secrets once we're done with them. We deleted this one. Now let's delete the from file variant. And now, let's just see what secrets we have. We've got secret, no resources found in the default namespace. Awesome, so we have no more secrets. This was our wild whirlwind tour of managing secrets with kubectl. Thank you for joining me on this little journey. Uh, hope you got some uh, value out of this. I had a little bit of fun, learned a bit too. But, um, I'm Alex. This has been Code Along with Alex, and I'll see you next time.